This hack tip is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hackshop.com. Welcome to Hack Tip! This is the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today, I'm making Netcat talk to other processes. We have learned how to use Netcat to chat with another computer and how to push a file transfer. So today, I'm going to show you how to use Netcat to make two processes talk to each other on a network. Now, I want to send all of my files in one directory on my Linux machine over to my Windows 8 computer. So, First off, on my Linux computer, which the IP address is 10.73.31.145, keep that in mind, I'm going to send a directory to my W8 machine, my Windows 8 machine. So on the sender computer, the Linux machine, I'm going to type in tar tech cf tech or dash pictures, which is a specific folder, pipe to NC, TAC L, TAC P, 1337. All right, press enter. Okay, now on my Windows 8 machine. Now this is where the IP address comes in handy for the Linux box. On my Windows machine, I'm going to start up Netcat, so NC, 10.73.31. What did I say, 145. And then I'm going to put in port 1337, the same port, and pipe that to tar, tack xf tack enter bam so after a couple of seconds it automatically goes back to my regular command prompt so i'm going to go into here okay so now we have a pictures window right here so if i click on that ta-da! you can see both of the pictures that i had recently transferred from my linux machine over to my windows machine it's like magic yay so now my new pictures and directory have been transferred so easy now after the break i'm going to show you another way to transfer files really quick and really easy stay tuned the Hack Shop is Hack5's premier store for all of your pen testing needs. Ta-da! Including one of my favorites, the USB rubber ducky, which looks like a flash drive but it actually quacks and types like a keyboard. It can type scripts into a computer ridiculously fast, like this week's favorite pick from the Gnoosh in the forums. So this script will automatically eject all of the CD trays of the target system at the beginning of every hour. Just think about that for a second. It's so funny. He calls it the CD tray poltergeist. I love this, it's so hilarious. And you guys are so creative. I'm having so much fun checking out all of these amazing pranks and I can't wait to do these to everybody in the office. You didn't hear that, Paul. We wouldn't do the show without your support. We seriously couldn't. So we would like to thank you with something special. You can use the coupon code SNUBS with any order for your very own signed hack tip stickers. And anybody can sign those, really, Darren, me, who knows, we'll see. Thank you again for supporting the show. And now we're back with processes. Now I can only also copy just one file, which we did similarly in a past hack tip. So with this one on the sender computer, my Linux machine again, I'm going to type in cat and then whatever the JPEG is called, web.jpg for this example. I'm going to pipe that to NC. Tac L, Tac P, 1337. When I press enter, you don't see anything on the screen quite yet, but we're going to move over to my Windows 8 machine where I'm trying to transfer the file, and I'm gonna type in the actual IP address of my Linux machine. So on the Windows box, I type in NC space, and then 10.73.31.145, which is the IP address, 1337, greater than symbol web.jpg. So what am I doing here? I'm basically telling Netcat to look at the IP address for my Linux machine and then use the port 1337 and basically take the file web.jpg from that Linux box. So when I press enter on here, and it's going to take a few moments for it actually to transfer the file, but once it's done, we should see it over in the directory. So if I look back at my Windows machine again, down here on my actual GUI, I see web.jpg. And that is a JPEG, I know that's the icon for JPEGs. So if I click on it, I don't see it quite yet because it's still basically trying to transfer. So I'll click back into my desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and 
click Control C to cancel out of both of these. And then double click on it again. There it is, snubs. That's exactly what the JPEG was supposed to look like. Cool. Now, another thing you can do that's kind of interesting with Netcat and, well, it might not be recommendable, is copying over the whole freaking hard disk drive. So you can do that as well with the cat command, and I'll have that in the show notes, and you can move the entire hard disk drive to another computer. Now, with, with that said, I would not necessarily recommend using Netcat to transfer your entire disk. If there are any errors during the transfer, it's not going to tell you what those errors are. So you could miss a completely different packet. You could lose something in the transfer process. So you can choose to use DD to duplicate your disk with Netcat. But even so, make sure that you know what you are doing. And I should probably do a segment on DD as well, because that's a pretty interesting program. So it doesn't end up standing for destroyer of disks. <laughs> Get it? DD, destroyer of disks. <laughs> I know, that was a terrible joke. Anyway. I'm pretty much done here. I will be wrapping up my Netcat series in the next week or so. So if you do have questions, feel free to send them over to me. You can either comment below or you can email us over at tips at hack5.org. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. We're doing SDR radio stuff. It's really, really fun. You should check it out. So I'll be there reminding you to trust your Technolust. Go transfer those files. <laughs>